Hey, welcome back to Robinson Foundry. I was recently contacted by a company called Xtool who asked if I was interested in testing out and reviewing their new 55 watt CO2 laser cutter, the P2. I don't generally do reviews, but I couldn't pass up an opportunity to add such a nice tool to my arsenal, and I'm already thinking of ways that I can incorporate it into different projects. Let me know if you have any ideas. I bought an inexpensive Chinese laser cutter from eBay about 8 years ago, and although it worked, it was really clunky and difficult to use, and as a result, I just didn't end up using it very much. The machine is a little over 100 pounds, so it took two of us to lift it on top of the stand that I had for my previous laser. This stand will have to work for now, but I am planning on retrofitting it to make it a lot more useful. Xtool also sent me their smoke purifying machine. One of the problems with these lasers is that they do produce quite a bit of smoke, and depending on where you live and how much you like your neighbors, that can be a problem. This smoke purifier slash fume extractor should be extremely useful in my shop, whether it be for laser cutting, welding, or metal casting. I'm really looking forward to using this thing. My initial impression of the machines was that everything was well made. I'm a pretty harsh critic when it comes to the build quality of things in general, and so far I've been really impressed with the build quality of the P2. The first thing to do when setting up this laser is to fill the laser tube with a mixture of distilled water and antifreeze. The antifreeze is included with the machine and you mix it with water based on the lowest annual temperature in your area. I live in Las Vegas and it doesn't get that cold here so I decided to add as little antifreeze as possible. To fill the tube with antifreeze and water, you just measure the correct amount, mix it together and pour it into the tube. And then turn on the machine and let it run for 30 seconds. And then you top it off with another pre-measured amount of water. Once that's done, you can start aligning the mirrors that direct the laser beam from the tube to the cutting head. Mine ended up being pretty much dead on from the factory, so there was no adjustment needed. There are plenty of videos out there showing exactly how to adjust the mirrors on this particular machine, so I'll let them show you how to do that. For my first test cut, I cut some 1 8 inch or 3 mm plywood that I got at my local big box hardware store. I like to use this material if I can, rather than something that's made specifically for laser cutting, which tends to be really expensive. What's really nice about this machine is that you can just place your workpiece on the bed and then one of the two built-in cameras will take an image of your workpiece automatically upload it into the Xtool Design Space software, and then you can just design straight onto that. Coming from using the cheap eBay laser cutter that I used to have, I can tell you that this feature is extremely useful. I selected one of the presets for cutting 3mm pine plywood and hit start.
Well, I'm really happy with these results. All the cuts are really crisp and it didn't take long at all. This machine can cut much thicker material, but unless you're cutting intricate shapes, that's not really something that I'm interested in. I would rather just use a bandsaw. Next, I wanted to see how small I could engrave text. To test this out, I found a piece of maple hardwood with a fairly tight grain structure so that I could see clearly what the text looks like. Well, I'm thoroughly impressed by these results. I think if I dialed in the settings a little bit more, I could probably end up with slightly crisper text, but I think you can engrave very legible text on hardwood at about 0.75 millimeters tall, which is about 30 thousandths of an inch. Another really useful feature of the P2 that takes advantage of the onboard cameras is the batch engrave feature. The way it works is you place multiple pieces of the same shape on the workbed. Then using the design space software, you can design on one piece and then the software will automatically place the same design on the other pieces. They still require a little adjustment and fine tuning afterwards, but the software does seem to do a really good job and this can be a huge time saver. Next I tried cutting some 5mm thick clear acrylic, which is about 200 thousandths. I used to make and sell fidget spinners cut out of this material, so I thought it was appropriate to cut one of my old designs out. For my first attempt, I used the preset for 6mm acrylic in the software. And for whatever reason, it only cut halfway through. I'm not really sure why this happened, but I just lowered the cut speed a little bit and it cut right through. Overall, I've been really impressed with this machine. Everything seems to have been really well thought out and well executed. Only time will tell how well this holds up, but I suspect it'll work just fine. One thing I really like about this machine is that you can operate it using the Xtool Design Space software, and you can also operate it using Lightburn. Lightburn currently doesn't support the camera feature, but it might in future versions. Another thing I like is that the Xtool Design Space software does seem to run without an internet connection, so that's also a big plus. There are a bunch of different attachments available for this machine, like a riser base, conveyor belt system, and a rotary base. However, I don't have any of those, so I can't comment on them. In the future, I would like to build a proper base for this and figure out a way to make my own riser base, which will allow me to engrave on much thicker material. As it sits right now, I can only process material 25 millimeters or one inch thick, which can be a problem sometimes. Well, I hope you found this review helpful, and if you're interested in buying one of these, I'll have affiliate links in the description. Well, I know this is definitely not my normal content, but like I said, I just couldn't pass up an opportunity to add such a cool machine to my arsenal. If you have any suggestions on how I could use it for future projects, I'd really love to hear them. As always, I hope you enjoyed watching the video, and if you did, let me know what you think in the comments, give the video a thumbs up, and subscribe for future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.